I'm Kevin Cirilli. It's time for the Daily Debrief. Let's get right to it. Republicans are gearing up for an impeachment one-two punch against both President Biden and Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The first step, a vote on the House floor to formalize an impeachment inquiry against Biden for his international business dealings. And House Speaker Mike Johnson told Fox News over the weekend that he's ready to go. Hurry up, says Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. The conservative firebrand added that while you're at it, impeach Mayorkas too for his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. MTG told reporters last week that, quote, the honeymoon is over, end quote, with the newly elected Republican speaker. And she's peeved at Johnson for not moving fast enough in impeaching Biden and Mayorkas. Stay tuned. Developing now, Doug Burgum is out. The long-shot Republican candidate suspended his campaign earlier. Burgum's campaign was seen as a long shot from the beginning. Former President Donald Trump remains the dominant Republican presidential frontrunner. Israel Defense Forces are launching a ground offensive into southern Gaza. There appears to be no signs of another ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. During the week-long truce last week, Israel released 240 prisoners, an overwhelming number of them children, and Hamas released more than 100 hostages. The White House says Ukraine needs more money in its defense against Russia. White House Budget Chief Shalanda Young told congressional leaders in a letter earlier that time is running out before the lack of funds impacts Ukraine on the battlefield. Meanwhile, the majority of Americans support funding for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan. 50% of Americans back aid for Israel, 67% for Ukraine, and 56% for Taiwan. This according to a new Beacon Research and Shaw poll released by the Reagan National Defense Survey. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said over the weekend that Israeli defense forces need to protect Gaza civilians or else they could lose the war against Hamas. You see, in this kind of a fight, the center of gravity is the civilian population. And if you drive them into the arms of the enemy, you replace a tactical victory with a strategic defeat. And so I personally pushed Israeli leaders to avoid civilian casualties and to shun irresponsible rhetoric, and to prevent violence by settlers in the West Bank, and to dramatically expand access to humanitarian aid. That comment right there, that launched criticism from Senator Lindsey Graham, the Republican from South Carolina, and he said it's impossible for Israel to achieve zero loss of civilian life. He's so naive. I mean, I've just lost all confidence in this guy. How about focusing on protecting our soldiers? men and women in Syria and Iraq, a strategic defeat would be inflaming the Palestinians. They're already inflamed. They're taught from the time they're born to hate the Jews. But where do Austin and Graham agree, breaking up Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville's chokehold on the more than 400 military nominations? Both Graham and Austin have said that it's putting the U.S. security at risk. Reports suggest that Tuberville might relent this week. But who knows? He's been blocking the nom since February to protest the Pentagon's abortion policy. Does money buy you happiness? Young people are more likely to say that it does than their elders. Get this, 72% of millennials, 67% of Gen Z, and 58% of Gen X, and 48% of baby boomers. That's the breakdown in terms of who thinks that money equals bliss, according to a new Empower survey. And there's been all of this talk in Washington, D.C. about why Americans are so pessimistic about the economic picture when economists keep saying that it's doing better than everybody thinks. Well, 60 7% of all respondents said that their paycheck isn't keeping up with inflation. Republicans could soon move to impeach President Biden and Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Joining us now to cover it all is The Hill's Brett Samuels. Brett, what's next in the step for the process of impeachment? Well, we're going to have to wait and see whether the House moves forward with this vote to sort of formalize the inquiry. The White House has basically argued without that vote, this thing is illegitimate. It's basically just red meat for the base. So uh, everyone is kind of waiting to see what happens with this vote, including the White House. All right. Come clean with me, though. Is this moderates pushing for it or MTG pushing for it? Well, the White House would certainly tell you it's MTG and, and the like, the sort of far right, as it were, of the House uh, conference that is pushing for this. Uh, the White House has basically called this red meat for the base. They see uh, no real substance to this. So 
uh, certainly the White House and maybe even some Republicans would admit to you, though maybe not in public, that, uh, that this is really kind of coming from the right flank. Will Speaker Johnson lose his job if he does not act to impeach President Biden? It's a great question. You know, as you mentioned at the top, it seems like uh, some folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene are kind of losing patience with Speaker Johnson if he doesn't move forward with this. Uh, you know, Kevin McCarthy certainly had the, the short leash with uh, with his right flank over this. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's certainly a very short honeymoon period for Speaker Johnson. We'll see if it costs him his job, though. I'm not sure Republicans, Republicans want to go through uh, the drama of selecting a speaker all over again. Will it cost the Republicans the majority in the House in 2024? Well, the White House and, and House Democrats certainly seem to think so. You know, they they are painting this as a political loser for Republicans, that this is something that, you know, Americans don't really care about. So, uh, you know, I think Democrats are willing to take their chances that uh, the public will see this as a political stunt, basically. All right. Thank you, Brett Samuels, reporter for The Hill. Bye-bye. The truth is out there, but the government isn't telling us. That's what one Republican congressman told NBC's Meet the Press. Republican Rep Tim Burchett from Tennessee says that the government isn't being truthful about what they know and when they know it about whether there's life out there. Burchett said that the intelligence community blocked his funding request for more transparency on the issue. And Burchett said that the government, quote, spent a whole, lec a whole heck of a lot of time, effort, and money telling the American public that they don't exist, but yet they're studying, end quote, if they exist or not. Something doesn't add up. Jay Leno says that he's ditching politics from his stand-up routine, saying that politics has become way too polarizing for audiences. Leno made the remark to The Hill's In the Know columnist, Judy Kurtz, who was on hand at the Kennedy Honors over the weekend for all of the festivities. Judy's joining me now. All right, uh, uh, Judy, uh, are comics like Leno done for good with politics? Well, Leno tells me he's done with the political punchlines, at least. He says too polarizing. He's sick of having audiences. As soon as he says a political joke, they immediately start going, wait, wait a second. Was, it, was that guy on my team? Was he on the other team? He said he doesn't want to deal with it. He finds it annoying. Well, let's take a listen. If we have the SOT quickly available, let's take a listen to that SOT. Here he is. I don't even do politics anymore in my act because I find it so, you know, it's so funny. An audience is like an orchestra. If you're up there and you're getting laughs, you're getting these kind of laughs you like. Then you get into political stuff and it goes, ha! you know, it, it just, it, it turns mean. So to me, I just don't do it anymore. I just find it so annoying. Uh, and I find the audience likes it better. They come to, hopefully they come to a comedy show to get away from politics. I mean, the thing you don't get, well, I think we get enough of everybody's opinions. It's nice to hear a singer just sing. Judy, you talked to Billy Crystal, too, and he said he also doesn't want to talk politics. Yeah, he was not in the mood to talk politics. He wanted to talk about being honored at the Kennedy Center Honors, which I get. He was one of the uh, five honorees there. Um, but I asked him about supporting Biden again in 2024 because he cut an ad uh, back in 2020 for Biden. This time around, he said, nope, not going to bite, not going to do it and talk politics. Judy, what else? Took, take us behind the scenes. What else happened at the Kennedy Center? It was a big night. We had Queen Latifah being honored, Renee Fleming, the opera singer, Dionne Warwick and Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. A uh, very musical night. Uh, we were looking for, you know, some maybe Beyonce's or Taylor Swift's to show up. Sometimes they surprise uh, the guests, the honorees with mega stars. We didn't see any Taylor sightings, so no, no Beyonce. No Bad Bunny. Who else are the kids? No Bad Bunny. Right. Maybe next year. <laughs> Oh, uh, did you see this, that uh, Billie Eilish, she says that Variety magazine outed her. What's the fallout been like in Hollywood? Yeah, this is an interesting story because Billie Eilish is describing this as an outing by Variety magazine. Um, she was asked about an interview she did with Variety where she said she was attracted to women. And then the follow up interview, uh, the, they asked about those comments and she called that an outing. Um, I, I don't think it really counts as an outing. Uh, journalists, you know, are taught uh, from the start to minimize harm. And you do want to be careful um, about doing so. But and there are many parts of the world world that being gay uh, can put someone in danger. I don't think that's what was happening here. When someone is asked about comments they made freely, uh, I don't think that's considered an outing. Judy Kurtz, you are always in the know. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Kevin.
And be sure to tune in to the final GOP debate of the year on America's fastest growing cable news network, News Nation. Sirius XM's Megyn Kelly, News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas, and the Washington Free Beacon's Eliana Johnson. They're set to moderate the primetime event live from the University of Alabama as the candidates make their case in America on the only network for all America. The News Nation Republican primary debate live December 6th at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And that's it for today's Daily Debrief. I'm Kevin Cirilli. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel and come back here soon for the intersection between politics and policy.